Hello, sisters. We're already dancing. We're just getting started and we are already dancing. Hello out there in Hustle Sisters world. You know me. I'm Annie, but that's RJ. I'm going to tell you about her in a second. I'm so glad if you're tuning in today that you're here because some of the most common, common things that I hear from people when it comes to their marketing or their sales, three big concerns. Number one, yeah, technology. Number two, yeah, budget. And number three, how do I get a conversation started? Uh, and I listen. Y'all know I listen when you talk. Yeah, I do. And because of that, I decided with the help of this lady I'm going to tell you about in just a second, that RJ is the perfect, perfect solution for a lot of these issues. So welcome everybody to the Messenger Marketing Revolution. Hustle Sisters is so proud to present my dear, dear friend and super genius, RJ Redden. Hi, RJ. <laughs> Hello, Annie. Thank you for asking me to be here. I am so ridiculously excited that I did put on my blue tutu. Just saying. He's wearing a tutu for me. That is the devotion of our friendship. Look at this. It's happening. It's happening. Dedication. Mm -hmm. Dedication, people, right there. So something funny happened recently, which is that I was talking to I don't know who, and they started talking about bots. And I, I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and uh, Jen loves your tutu. Jen Belt is in the house. And I was like, what the heck is a bot? And then I had like all of these weird like sci-fi thoughts like buzzing through my brain. And then I think I brought it up to Jenny and I was like, I really got to get on a train about this. And she's like, um, RJ? <laughs> of course, RJ. So RJ is my sister in nerddom. Uh, we could do that all day, but the thing that I love about where our nerddom collides is that RJ shares my obsession for being on the cutting edge of all things marketing, especially if it can be done on the cheap. Absolutely. But I mean, if I, if you're like me, like I was, I mean, I'm talking like a month ago. This was not, you know, years ago. This was like a month ago that I had my bot awakening. RJ, what the crap? is a bot and and what does it do and what does it not do okay so the short explanation is this a bot is a conversation on steroids that's what it is it's a it's you know we have been doing conversation marketing since the beginning of time um digital marketing is uh relatively new on this scale and we have been doing conversation marketing you meet somebody you sit down you enjoy a beverage uh you ask them questions they ask you questions you figure out if this is a person you gel with and then after that decision is made, then you think about ways you can collaborate or do business. And that's how the stuff works. Um, for, for, my, for my experience, the entirety of social media is to start a conversation with somebody so that you can then take that conversation from online to offline, figure out if you gel, and then figure out what you can do with that information. Yeah. So this is really, it's its totally digital, but it's really old school all at the same time. I love it, that's my favorite thing. Oh, if I could just convince people to kick their marketing old school, but with technology all the time, I'd be so freaking happy. So it's a conversation on steroids. Yeah. That takes place in Facebook Messenger? In Facebook Messenger, a program we all know and love, right? Like. Everybody's been using this to talk to people they care about for years and people use email to talk about work. And so recently Facebook opened it up so that you can, so that companies can talk to people, humans, um, through Facebook Messenger as, as well. So it's not just person to person anymore. Now it's person to business. So I, as my idea doula page. Yeah. Could talk to you, not even just any to you, but the idea doula could talk to you. Yes. And you, conversely, could start a conversation with me as the idea doula without going on my personal page. Y'all, those of you who hate visibility, those of you who really don't like that your personal and professional lives have to blend online, lean in, okay? Lean in, because this is a way to really keep your food from touching in that way and, and keep a little bit more of that anonymity going. This could be brilliant. So 
It's a conversation that takes place in Facebook Messenger that you can do from your page or from your business's page or anything like that. And the bot part leads me to think that it's automated in some way. Is this like if I call, you know, Geico customer service and I have to say agent 675 times and then they're like, we're sorry, we don't have service in Portugal. And I'm like, what? And they're like, we're sorry, no agents are available right now. And I'm like, but what? Like, is that like, what is the difference between this conversation with something that is not me and and calling, you know, Geico customer service? Yeah. Absolutely. So here's the difference. Those systems are 100% automated. There's no human until you get to the very end of those things. If you get to the very end of those things, you know that if you call the United States Postal Service, you Canadians are going to scream. <laughs> United States Postal Service, if you call them, they say, due to high call volume, no one is available. And then it just hangs up. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> Here with our marketing, but see though, think about if that just said, if you just like if I just said that and you're out there, you're like, oh my god, I would never drop the ball like that again. Lean in, lean in. Okay, so I cut you off. So, so it's automated, but the only automated part is that it will send a particular message at a particular time that you specify. the 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 automated part is just the delivery. The conversation is something that you have craft, crafted, that you have put your personality and style into. You've put your pictures and your, your little giffies and your videos and all of that stuff. All of that is human. All of that is you. The only automatic bot part is the delivery of it. And yeah. Facebook Messenger takes care of that. Daniela is <sighs> Hello, yeah. Daniela. You know, and I think that's, I think the way that it was finally explained to me in a way that I understood is that this is the next step. This is the next level of an autoresponder email sequence, which allows it to be a lot more personal, timed better. You don't have to wait as long. You're like, how many of you are doing drip emails right now? If you're doing automated emails of any kind for clients, for follow-up, for anything, or if you're routinely trying to go one to many in terms of your messaging, let me know so we can help tailor this for you even more. But for me, I was like, oh, I get it. It's autoresponder messenger, or at least it can be. It is, but it takes it up a level. With an email, you're composing something. It's like you're composing a speech or a paper for school, right? You got to have a beginning, a middle, and an ending, and it's got to be good, and it's got to be engaging, and it's got to be catchy because people don't like to read these days. They don't, and we're not going to change that anytime soon. And then, you know, that email needs to leave with a mini cliffhanger so that they'll open the next one and all of that kind of stuff. It's all focused on this. It's you putting out. And hoping that people will catch that and lean in, right? Perfect. Like, I received this email, but the call to action is not simply reply normally, right? The call to action is go over here, book this thing, buy this thing, that, that, that. And so it's like, okay, it's not an equal action reaction. It's like no. I send you an email and then you have to go do some other thing, which then eventually gets back to me. This is like message, message. One, yeah. Two. One, two. And during that conversation, just like you would in a normal conversation, just like in the conversation you and I are having right now, you get to ask questions and get people to think and answer those questions. And then you get to tailor the rest of their experience toward what that answer was. I just think that's so damn sexy. I know that like the non-nerds in the room are like, okay, who cares? But if you have been in this business for as long as RJ and I have, the, the possibility of getting someone involved in a dialogue early in the process is really pretty freaking revolutionary. Thus the name of this talk, right? It is a revolution because before you got to buy someone 19 courses before they answer a freaking question. This one's like, oh, cool. You interested? This is a first date. I'm going to ask you a great question. Oh, cool. You interested? This is a job interview. I'm going to ask you a great question right off the bat. Right, that next level of engagement. I freaking love it. Um, you are getting blown up in the chat about your Bob Ross photo. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And 
There's something to that. Should I talk about that now, Annie? Uh, you want to talk about it or you want to tease them? I'm going to tease you. There's something very Bob Rossian coming up before the end of this talk. And go to commercial break if we believe in commercial breaks or if I had sponsors. <laughs> I could just twirl in the tutu. I mean, that could be a commercial break. It's like a boss. Like a boss. Ladies and gentlemen, there's some gentlemen here that's the best sisters. Point being, anyway. Bob Ross will come up again. Don't you worry about a thing. Jenna says, sorry, I'm excited for this because I haven't been using Messenger like I should. You know what? Neither have I. In complete honesty, and if I'm not, here's the thing. The marketers in the room, if I'm not using it effectively, that means I can't teach my clients how to use it effectively either. So what do you think, um, what do you think is a really big misconception about this whole process like what do you think is like a hesitation or someone that's gonna go I don't know if that's for me yeah well I think one of the big misconceptions is what we've already covered that because it has the name bot it's somehow tied to Twitter in Russia uh, and so that that's actually one of the weird misconceptions like my own sister she does my hair and doing my hair if I was connected to Twitter and Russia because I said the word bot. I'm like, no, honey. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I don't do those things. And there was recently <laughs> there was recently that article on the New York Times about bots and how bot, the way they're using it, it's an empty profile of somebody that you can buy to get likes and retweets and stuff like that. We are not those kind of marketers here. That is not anything that we deal with. No, the whole point, listen, if you are in this group with me and with RJ and with all of us, it is because you want your marketing to be impactful, but you also don't want to be a jackass, right? That's right. If you're in here with us, you are running a heart-centered business. And if you're running a heart-centered business, the caliber of your marketing and the effect that it has on people is deeply important to you. So the yeah. last thing you want to do is make them feel like a number. The last thing you want to do is make them feel like, oh, I'm back on Geico customer service. I don't know why I'm picking on Geico, guys. It's not just Geico. But, you know, it, it really, um, it is. Now, Mary Patchell is joining us a little bit late, uh, and she asked a really, really great question. So it's not just within Facebook Messenger. It uses Facebook Messenger as the platform, but it's applying a back end to it. Right, RJ? There is, uh, there is a back end to it. Um, there is, there are ways to build it completely on Messenger. They are way too complicated for normal folks. Uh, and you know what? Honestly, I've got a degree. It's too complicated for me. I build on a platform called ManyChat. Um, it is, you know, it is the most what you see is what you get platform out there. You don't have to see code if you don't want to, and it's dirt cheap, so there you go. You hear that, y'all? She said it's cheap. It's Victoria cheap. says, Messenger is becoming an issue for me. I dread it. Wrong mm -hmm. people contacting me through my profile, waiting for bots to expand so I can use it from my profile. Now I just answer PMs with a link to a post. You know what? I think that's a really interesting idea because... There are people that are going to jump on this right away and do Messenger really, really badly. And I'm not just talking about bots. I'm talking about, like, there are people that spam the crap out of you. Just like there's a bunch of people that just add you in every single group without even asking or people that email you 19 times a day, right? There's always people that are going to take a marketing brilliant thing and turn it into a meh, right? But this is more about a conversation that can start both ways, especially inbound. Yeah. They're coming to you. They've discovered you through something. This is another addition to your funnel that's making sure that the people who want to talk to you or the people most likely to respond can respond, right? It's true. And like, think about this. Okay, we've all got a website or we've got a website in process, right? We all want to have that electronic storefront to say who we are, what we do, what we sell, how we can help you, all that kind of stuff. It's beautiful. We've all had them for quite a while now. What if any time somebody hit on your website, or your or hit send a message on your Facebook page. What if you were right there, ready to take a question 
any question they have. Because I know you got a contact page. You're a professional. I know you got one. I've got a form. Yeah, everybody's got a form, babies. It's fine. Uh, that's wonderful. But very few people use that kind of stuff nowadays. Again, it's an email. It's a work thing. This is designed so Facebook has it designed so you can use Messenger to talk to. And this is a quote from their Facebook terms of service. And it's the most important sentence in it. They're allowing you to talk to people and businesses you care about. So this answers Victoria's question. Victoria, there are seven ways to get the hell out of a conversation you don't want to be in. And you can do it fast and you can do it completely painlessly. They have made this on purpose because they know that there are marketers like us. And then there are those marketers out there who will constantly spam your messenger with a Groupon or something. Those people get their accounts taken away really fast. And let me tell you, Facebook is not a place that you can call up and go, hey, could you reinstate me? I made a mistake. There are people who go, you're going to have to start a new page. Uh, we are not giving you this account back. They will take away your messenger for your page. They will do it and they will do it without <laughs> without too much fanfare because yeah. they're Facebook and they can. Well, those, are the, um, those of you who are my clients and, and we've been talking about um, sending an intro message when they join the community or something like that. Uh, that's why I feel like send them in small batches because Facebook is being so protective of this technology. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, and because they got in so much trouble with the Russians uh, that they will shut you down for pretty much anything if they think that you're spammy. Right. Yep. So that's what I, I just I just love this even more. Um, Jenna asked a really great question, though. She said, is this just about like welcome sequences or does this go beyond that? So what are some of the other things that in addition to welcome sequences that this could be used for? It's so beautiful. Let me <laughs> I love it when you nerd out, RJ. Oh, darling. So absolutely welcome onboarding sequences, okay? You want to know that your people feel welcomed, that they feel comfortable. It's like you're having a party at your house. They feel welcomed. They feel comfortable. They've got a drink in their hand of some sort of beverage. And if they have any questions like, hey, where's the bathroom, that they've asked you. That way. No. Yeah, it's that way. Coffee's over here. Love you. Game's in there. Whatever it is, right? Those welcome welcome sequences are also really cool to get, you know, some information. Hey, well, the first thing I ask you when you get into my bot is, what do you want to learn about bots? <laughs> Why? Because I want to point you down the path that's going to teach you the most. You might be a person who's starting from zero. You might be a person who knows a bit. I want to know which kind of person you are, and I want to put you down the path that's going to give you the most value because that value is going to stick somebody. Now, back to the original wow. question. <laughs> Hold on. And if you're asking questions, I want each and every one of you making sure that you're capturing those answers because whether or not this ends in a sale or conversion, this is called R&D. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting the same questions over and over. If you're seeing similarities, commonalities here, that's great things for video. It's great things for content. Great thing to put on an FAQ page. Great thing to talk about in your lives, right? Any of these things. So it's not only the conversation itself that's valuable. It's all the marketing information that you can glean from it, right? So, all right, we talked about welcome sequences. What else we have? So we have got, uh, if you've got a few people in your audience, and I know you do, who create content regularly, whether that content is uh, blogging, uh, videos, uh, podcasts, live streams, whatever it is, what, how cool would it be to let people know when there's something new up or when you're going to go on in 15 minutes? Yeah, mm -hmm. so announcement. So when I first brought this up to RJ, I was like, oh, cool. It's a welcome sequence thing. Very similarly minded to Jenna. Like, okay, cool. I can welcome people to me or people can ask me questions or whatever. Um, but then she's like, well, have you thought about using it for house sisters? And I was like, uh -uh. I'm sorry, what? And so, you know, what if every time that there was a free promo opportunity, I could push that out to you all so that all of you would see it and I wouldn't get lost, but also in a way that's not spammy. What if every time someone was looking specifically for you or what if every time one of these was starting and you would RSVP, boom, automatic, right? That's one of the things you can do. Group engagement, reminders. Uh, you can push content. There's 
I mean, that's just a fraction. I know there's a hundred bajillion things more. Well, hundreds in the, like webinars for those of you who do webinars. How do you get butts in the seats? Set a reminder for 24 hours, one hour, 10 minutes before and send a link every time. You know, I mean, these are things that people are already doing like through email and that's fine. But I deal with a whole lot of people who are like this all the time on Messenger and sending it through Messenger, having them click. It's beautiful stuff. Um, the uh, some of the other things that you can do, I have I have groupings of uh, templates for sale. Uh, those are starting blocks for people to because you know just being told about a program over and over again doesn't necessarily get people started in it. So I've got uh, templates that will help people keep their Facebook group engaged. You can run seven day challenges through a bot. Those are phenomenal. You can run seven day video challenges through a bot. Those are, are phenomenal. You, are y'all hearing this? All my coaches out there with your Facebook groups and the challenges and your webinars. Are you hearing this? Mm -hmm. Want engagement? Boom. And so here's the thing. Oh my God. What? I just got hit up by Jenny's messenger bot as we speak. <laughs> and I'm gonna, oh my God, Jenny, are you here? This is there. Hi, Annie. Example. In real time. Hi, Annie. And seriously, it says now. Do you guys see that? It says now. Hi, Annie. Quick two-part question for you. Are you procrastinating this week? Yes. Now I'm going to be like, damn it, I got to talk to Coach Jenny because I am procrastinating this week. Ah! Boom. Right? <laughs> and it's like, it's it's not intrusive, guys. It's in between an ad that I have for Let Go, which is like Craigslist, and above a live video my friend has on Instagram. I'm not upset about it. I'm not pissed about it. Right. And so here's the other thing. I feel like one of the hesitations out there, like we already talked about a little bit, is this is intrusive or this is douchey. This is all because you're building a relationship. This is permission based. Right. Yes. yes. Are engaging with you. And if they stop engaging with you, the bot can stop. It stops. It won't send a message. A Facebook has Facebook and mini chat. They work together. It will absolutely not send a uh, you know, certain kinds of messages past the 24 hour window uh, yeah. at all. I mean, it is very regulated when and what kind of messages you can send and what kind of engagement you're getting it. And people have to opt in. Now, here's a real common misconception, Annie. If you've got 6,000 likes on your Facebook page, how many bot subscribers do you have? Oh, boy. It's, it's real easy. Zero. 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 You have to opt in. There is no, no opportunity for me or anyone else to opt you in to a bot. There is no opportunity. They have made it very, very clear. And honestly, when people get into mine, there's a couple of little welcome messages and then there's a button. And it's like, you know, I want I want you to opt in a second time. Sometimes I even say, hey, can I use this space to teach you about bots? And if you press the button that says sure, then I know that you really want to be here. Here's the thing. Forever and ever, we've been told, build your email list, build your email list. Now, I'm not telling you not to do that. That would be heresy. Several people would be after my head. It would be a very bad idea. Very bad. We have like a website story fight on our hands, like the emailers and the Facebook marketers, like in it, in it. Horrible, but beautiful. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. Well, so I'm not here to, to tell you not to do that. I'm just saying that you've been told forever that bigger numbers are better. Bigger numbers are better because it's a numbers game when you're emailing. Email's like a lecture, a bot is like an interactive conversation. That's where they're different. When you have people in your bot, it is not about the number of people in there because the people are much more, have much more skin in the game yeah, they're when they're in there. Lead. Yeah. And I mean, email, you hear a variety of things, but like there are some industries where a 10% open rate is like a dream. That means 90% of people are ignoring you. Not actively, don't panic everybody, don't like, you know, have a cow here. But that means that 90% of people are either actively ignoring you or they're not seeing it or the time's not right or something else. It's not meeting 90% of people. Yeah. In connecting higher way to just get it out there, get it seen. Yes.
And that's the thing. Like, if I'm to compare open rates, and a lot of people get excited over this, I'm going to tell you that I looked at all the people that I'm working with, and I'm working with about 15 or so accounts. I looked at the open rate, and I kind of averaged it out. Open rate on uh, on these messenger bots is 85%. That's an average of my customers at this time that I'm working with. I've seen numbers higher than that, but I want to be conservative. It's 85%. And the opt-in rate, the click-through rate, right? That's 40%. I got 40% of the people clicking all the way through to the damn end. What the hell? <laughs> That's amazing. Imagine, everybody, imagine. You put so much thought into making beautiful product or services. You put so much thought into how you deliver them. You put so much thought into finding the right person and, and diving into their, their psychology and their needs and everything like that. And then you get to tell that to eight out of 10 people and four out of 10 people are like, heck yeah, I'm mm -hmm. down. If your Facebook ad was converting at that rate, you'd be a bajillionaire. Yeah, you would. If your email marketing converted at that rate, email marketing would sort of suck now, you know, like not for everybody. But I just I keep I keep getting blown away by the idea of a heart centered entrepreneur with a beautiful product or service in a way that is completely non douchebaggy, but high engagement. Like <laughs> that is just blowing my mind. It's like the three points of the triangle that shouldn't ever exist all at once. So, but what about like now that we're like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever because it is and everyone should do it and I'm doing it. You're going to see a hustle bot for us really, really soon. And I can't wait to see what you think about it. Um, Cause also I was like, I don't want to beat y'all up with notifications all day. <laughs> but um, I know a lot of our, a lot of our people here, a lot of our sisters are um, really quite, how do I say this? Completely terrified of technology. Yeah. Um, what is, is this something inaccessible? Like I remember, you know, it took me like four hours to plant my Facebook pixel and, and there's still yeah. people like, oh, I, I know. I mean, back in the day when everything in WordPress, you had to like go in and like hack your own HTML. Mm -hmm. It's terrifying when we learned it. But I mean, what do you say to the people out there who are like, wow, thanks RJ. That sounds super great but I can't use the microwave. Yeah. I, I want to say to you, first of all, that I get it. Um, I get it. I've been working with small business owners on their technology for at least 10 years. I hung out my shingle, you know, full time for sure three years ago. Uh, but I have been working with people paid work for a long, long time. And I get what holds you back. I, uh, I don't know if you know, Annie, but I went back to school a few years ago and I got a degree in actual technology because I've always been like a geek girl, you know, which is great. But I decided that if I was ever going to really be taken seriously and needed a degree and I sat in those classes, Annie, and I there were times that I just thought I have no idea what in the hell they're talking about. And everybody here seems to know. And I don't know. And I don't know how I'm even going to figure it out. Crappy feeling because that, that, that situation I have before, right? Heart Center yeah. Entrepreneur, incredible product, beautiful message, all these hours, all this time, all this money put into crafting it. And then, you know, all this enthusiasm that you muster and all this fear you set aside. And then you sit down to a computer and you're like, I don't know what to do. It's horrible. It crushes dreams, right? It does because it's right there in your grasp and you can't get it. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What, are you, what were you saying? You didn't. You're right. It's right there in your dream and it's hard to grasp But with some of these really not user-friendly technologies. But but I was wondering if you could expand on something that you said before, which is that many chat and, and bots themselves are what you see is what you get. They're super user-friendly by nature. So if if... What do you say to the people out there right now, like my beautiful friend, Mary Petchel, who admits, good job, Mary, that she's 100% te terrified of technology? Mary, thank you for saying that, first of all, because it ain't easy, is it? Seems like everybody under a certain age was born with a cell phone in their hand. 
Um, it seems like everybody else knows this. Uh, and when I say user friendly, yeah, well, what's my user friendly compared to your user friendly? I want to. We've we've taught we've said all this th these things about bots. I haven't really told you who I am. Oh me, yeah, who the heck are you? <laughs> Why are you talking about this right now? <laughs> Let me tell you who I am to you, and I'm going to do that through the magic of storytelling. Are you ready? Choo 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 choo. <laughs> the choo choo. The choo choo. The choo choo. Show them. The choo choo. The oh, the tutu. Show them the tutu. The magic of storytelling. <laughs> I love you, Annie. Things that we do for you people. That was fantastic. Okay, so lean in. I'm going to borrow your line. I, uh, I was in college a long time ago. <laughs> It was a long, long time ago, darlings, before the internet. I was in undergrad, and I was actually a theater major, if you can possibly believe this. I worked in, uh, you know, we all were jacking around before play practice one time. There was this great big ladder on stage, and it was the kind where it went 30 feet up into the air. It was for the lights. And so, and you could climb up both sides of it. We're jacking around before play practice. What does RJ do? Decide she's going to cure her fear of heights. No, thank you. 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 <laughs> I am short. I just assumed that that meant that God wants me to stay low. The ground. I can't walk on open grating. I can't walk down a fire escape. I'll burn to death. <laughs> <laughs> It's not good. You have this 30 foot ladder. And I decide uh, we're just we're just playing around. I'm going to I'm going to climb up this thing. I'm going to cure my fear of heights by exposure. Um, so I get up on the thing. I climb up. I get about three quarters of the way up. And all of a sudden, and you know this feeling, Annie, and it is this. It just I felt so stupid, but I froze. I couldn't move. I couldn't move at all. I could hear my friends down by my feet laughing at me because it was time to start now. And guess who's frozen on a ladder? 20 feet in the air. With lights actually shining on me. It was not the greatest situation in the whole world. But I, I, I knew intellectually, RJ, you got to get down the ladder. I knew how to get down the ladder. I could not make my muscles move because my brain was so terrified that I was going to splat it. I could see it in my head. Now enter my friend, Chad. Hi, Chad. Uh, my best friend. My best friend didn't make fun of me. My best friend walked over to the other side of the ladder, and he climbed up until he was eye level with me. And he said, okay, RJ, I want you to just breathe in and out for a second. And he said, listen to the sound of my voice. I know you're scared right now. All I need you to do, RJ, is do what I'm doing. He didn't shout directions at me. He didn't shame me in front of other people. He didn't laugh at me. He didn't say I was stupid. He wasn't sarcastic. He just took his hand from the rung and moved it to a lower rung. And then he took his other hand and he did the same thing. And he waited for me to follow him each time. And I got down to the floor, obviously, because I'm talking to you now. Otherwise, I'd still be there anyway. God, if I was like, okay, RJ. So I just want to tell you something right now with technology. I'm your Chad. I'll meet you where you are. You're a shepherd. You're a shepherd of technology. I will. I, I don't care what your level is right now. Listen, every single template that I have, every package, every class comes with time with me. Why? Because I want to know you. I want to know your questions. I want to know your business. And I want to know. Right? Like, we can plan for people to get stuck. We yeah. can assume where people will get stuck. But nothing is worse than, like, investing in something. Again, you're trucking along. You're climbing that ladder. You're like, look, I'm doing it. I'm getting it done. And then you're like, oh, I hit a snag. And now I'm just going to fall because I don't know what else to do. And nobody knows you're there. I love that about you, about, uh, about that Chad relationship. And I think, you know. Cheers to you, Chad, wherever you are. Watertown, yeah. South Dakota. Um. <laughs> oh, boy. But, you know, it's it's totally true that 
you got to listen. If you're terrified of technology, you got to face it and you got to just say, you know what, I'm terrified. But the nice thing is, what we're promising you here is a user friendly platform. Still, yes, what's user friendly, but a clear cut path one rung at a time with somebody next to you on the ladder. Right? That's amazing. That's amazing. Because otherwise, yeah, you're back on Geico customer service and you're just like, I just want somebody to help me. <laughs> I just wish a human would talk to me. You know what, Annie? People are so starved for a human genuine contact nowadays starbucks ain't just selling coffee i think our friend monique sent that sent that email out a while ago and i have been repeating that line ever since i totally stole it from her but it ain't just selling coffee it's selling a human experience listen i know that this sounds odd and i know it sounds like cognitive dissonance when two ideas just don't connect but bots are the most personal form of social media communication that I have run across. Bots are incredibly personal because it's you, it's still you, it's still you having the conversation. It's still you reaching out with your personality. It's just delivered in an automated way. So it's like if a robot had a baby with an answering machine, <laughs> And that baby had a baby with email marketing. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere in there. <laughs> yes, we're seeing a lot of things here. Jenny said something a while back. I'm going to turn my echo down. I love um, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Jenny said her favorite part is that her bot asks a question so that leads to a one-on-one -on -one conversation, not just another Facebook conversation. And, and I think a whole lot of us here I mean, a lot of them, I taught you how to do it. We run Facebook communities. Yeah. And we, we have beautiful threads. And, and how come, you know, sometimes a video that we make when we're literally running out the door converts like crazy. And other videos that we pour all this time into doesn't convert. Well, a lot of it's timing. A lot of it is making it personal for people. And so if you can take that brilliant mind of yours, whether or not you want to admit that you're brilliant, which I beg to differ, I think you're quite brilliant, all of you, or you would not be in this group. Um, if you take that and channel it into something that's instantly two-sided, that's yes. instantly meant to converse with, right? It's Facebook Messenger. Yeah. The other thing, so you you beautifully talked about Chad and and the fear of technology and and how everybody needs a Chad and and that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and also the other thing is, you know, you can hire a strategist. Like RJ. Um, and specifically tailor whatever you need for your business for less than what I pay for most of my subscription models for one month, right? Like you can set this up magnificently on the cheap. When's the last time a marketing platform has promised to be cheap? Yeah. And it's not going to be cheap for long. No, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> first wave of defense here, right? Yeah, baby. That's why the revolution, it's the wild flipping West out there. And that's another thing is that, you know, there are a lot of people that talk about being a Facebook messenger marketing expert and, and all it, they throw some titles around and there's some certifications that you can get. I just want to encourage you to maybe look past some of that because we, you, what, you know, what makes a person an expert? What, you know, what, uh, if you've been out shopping for bots and things like that, you'll know, you know that I, I belong to many chat community, which is like 30,000 people. New people pop in there with questions all the time and they immediately get attacked by everybody who's selling courses. Mm. Yeah. So I talked to one lady a couple of weeks ago. And she had written a simple question and a ton of people had hopped on there and somebody had mentioned my name. So I came in private messenger. I said, Hey, you can, she was, she was having trouble. She was having a little confidence trouble. And I said, listen, if you can edit a PowerPoint, you can make a bot happen. 
Uh, and then she and I had a, a little phone call afterwards and we didn't do, we ended it, didn't end up doing business right there. But what I found out was that every single person on the thread above me had said, I'm an expert. I speak at conferences. I'm awesome. Pay me $2,000 for this program. Now, listen, I have some services that are pretty expensive. I'm getting a migraine about this. Oh, my darlings, my darlings. Listen, those aren't my people. You're my people. Small business owners, people wearing 70 hats, people who are coaching, uh, people who are running, running their own small things that can't afford $2,000 a pop for this thing. Listen, we don't, you know, like it's, it's in such a stage. How can you even call yourself an expert? Me, I've spent hundreds of hours. If that makes me an expert, then I'm an expert, but I'm absolutely never going to, I'm never going to lead with that. You know what I'm saying? Well, but here's the thing though. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to toot your horn here for a second. Number one, you are an expert because you have poured all the time in this. Number two, you're an expert because you have a proven track record at this. And number three, you have the right attitude, which is like, if I don't know, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out well. Right. An expert, and this is a total side rant. Ooh, any rant for tomorrow, y'all. An expert does not get to just sit on their butt and never learn more, right? Like Reiki practitioners are constantly being attuned, right? Physical therapists have to keep getting education credits. Professors have to stay up with the times, right? It has to evolve. And so I don't care if you're hiring a Facebook marketer, a copywriter, and a lawyer, if they're not staying fresh, they're not an expert anymore. So number one, the question is, who's an expert in the first place? And the second thing is, who's going to be an expert tomorrow? My vote on both of those things is RJ, which is why she's here. You know, what's really interesting is that um, Jenna's gotten scammed over by a bunch of people. She's saying in the comments first, she moved on to the many chat free account because the course didn't help. It was a bunch of just random crap that cost $75. And then the other thing is this early adopter idea um, scammed a bunch of people by saying like, hey, let's put a course in a group and then never showed up, right? So <laughs> which, there's another Annie rant for another day. Thank you for being people who deliver what you say, what you're going to deliver. Oh my God. But think about it this way. That's a whole, like that's perfect full circle, Jenna. It's like, this is going to help you deliver on your promises better. Right? It's going to help you deliver on your promises better. And so we talked a little bit about like, look, if you want to welcome people into a community, if you want to send out alerts, if you want to keep, uh, if you want to keep tabs on people, right? If you have a bunch of different clients and you want to see how things are, if you sell physical product and you want to see how it's landing or, or if it's, you know, if they have any questions, if you want to run it as a customer service platform, all of these things you can do. Yeah. Right? And the last one, customer service is dying. In my opinion, the number one way to stay relevant and to keep growing right now is to kick it old school when it comes to customer service. Yep. And new fangled shiny thing is an excellent way to do that, right? So uh, I want to ask now if anybody has any questions, but but one of my questions is, um, uh, did it do, do, what was my question? One of my questions for you is, how do I know if a bot is right for me? Yeah. Okay. So a bot is not right for everyone. Uh, I will say that. If you can hold up your end of a conversation, if you are willing to work with technology and not quit when it gets, you know, if you're willing to call me when it gets hard mm -hmm. and if you're willing to spend 20 minutes a day and a cup of coffee every day, bots are, and I've had this conversation with a couple of people in the last couple of days. There are some people that will sell it as I've said it and forget it technology. Mm -hmm. They will sell it like, oh, you make up this sequence and then you've run a Facebook ad to it and then you're going to make a million dollars. No, sweetheart, you're not. You're not. Here's what happens. I, I know how to write bots pretty darn well. I still review mine on a regular basis. Well, you have to. 
Yeah, you review it. it. You look for, I mean, I get in there every day. I look for people who have tried to start a conversation with me that my alerts have not, you know, somehow picked up because I have alerts that tell me behind the scenes. I can I can show you how to set those up. It's pretty easy. Um, I, I look for any conversation uh, that that has that I need to respond to that I've not responded to. Uh, I look for people that I can encourage because you can get on your fa- your pages app. You can leave somebody a voicemail message through their page. You can get on and for a minute, just encourage them and tell them they can do it. And it's going to be okay. I do that a lot. Marketing as encouragement. Darling. As encouragement. I, I get on and I, I have that 20 minutes a day. I, I also tweak and I make sure that things flow well and are sounding well. And I look at points where people are dropping off and I think about how they, how that could be better. And I, uh, I'll be, I haven't done this yet, but, um, I'm going to be setting up an announcements thing here pretty soon as well. There's, there's stuff to do every day. This is a garden, babies. It's a garden. Can you garden? Do you have enough patience to garden? Sometimes people don't. And, and, and can you treat it? like gardening. There's two kinds of people. There's people with the garden that hate their garden and they resent the work of the garden. And then there's people that walk out every day and go, oh, look at this growth. Ooh, what am I going to do with that? Ooh. So I love that idea. How can you adopt a gardener's mindset for this new technology? Jenna has a really amazing question. How do I find RJ and learn from her? Well, grasshopper, it's really, really easy, darling. So uh, I, I, I run a site called blackbeltbots.com. I have a Facebook page called blackbeltbots.com. But really, all you need to do, because you're here and you're a hustle sister, I want you to go to hustleyobot.com. Hustleyobot.com. Like hustle, like the way that we spell it, yo, Y-O, bot, B-O-T, hustle, yo, bot.com. And what are they going to find there? You set up something truly fabulous just for us. I did set up something just just for you. Um, it contains my, you know, seven-day free mini course, all of that stuff. That'll get on there. But I want you to know that if you sign up with me through that bot, I will... I will walk you through the stuff. Most people, when they get a template or whatever, they get a half hour with me free. Y'all get more than that. Y'all get an hour with me. Look at this. And this this seven-day free course, how many of us have taken free courses that are crap? Almost all of us. Probably all of us. Probably more than one. This is an action-packed course, y'all. And we just got a testimonial coming in in case you're, you know, teetering on the edge of going to hustleyobot.com. Our beloved Jen said, RJ built mine to use to train my direct sales team. So damn effective. You're getting lots of comments uh, in here about, you know, being uh, being real. And you're totally, completely real. Right. So, and, and so I, I think it's totally true that, yes, it takes effort. Right. There is no easy button in entrepreneurship, but what you can do is incremental progress in something that you can invest in. And while we're being super real, give me a high low on this investment. Like what's the cheapest, lowest barrier to entry here? And what's like, I'm going to the moon. Give me like just a the whole range. Okay. So I'll do that. And I want to, I want to say before we get off, I want to, I do want to tell you what my absolute favorite thing about bots is. And I think that, I think that you're going to agree with it. And we promise Bob Ross too. And Bob Ross. So I've got two promises. <laughs> and we've got 12 minutes. We can we do this. Annie. <laughs> so the price ranges. Darlings, you can do this without me. You can do this entirely for free. Manychat.com. You can go start a free account there now and start working through that. Another thing I, with a good strategist is that they'll tell you how to do stuff for free or without them. You, you totally can do that. And if you have, a, you know, if you have some technological know-how, if you've got some of that uh, and you're willing to, to work through that, you can totally 
get that done. It's going to be, that's the, this amount of elbow grease, this amount of money. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you can also go to my site, blackbeltbots.com to the shop tab. It has all my templates and courses. I get templates packages, 99 bucks. Those come with an hour free of AMA with RJ. You're working through your bot. I got AMA with RJ, an hour free. Did you, did you say $99? 90, 99 bucks for the template. $999? You said nine, 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 two numbers? Two numbers. Two and numbers. I want to make this so accessible. And coaching for $99? Yeah. My business coach is going to kill me, but yeah. Hustle. You listen, sisters, you're here. You're here with Annie. I trust that this is this is going to be a thing that you'll take seriously. I trust that you want to take your business in a direction that isn't, you know, marketing spam. I trust that you're going to get a lot out of this. And I want to help you because I love this community and I love being a part of it. And it's awesome. So... 99 bucks for for there uh there's a direct sales template package there's a coaching template package and there's a free template package for customer service bots there it is again jenna says she got spit up for 75 bucks come on we've all been there too right this is this is hand holding plus practicum for 99 bucks tailored to your business that is a no brainer and here's the thing here's the thing here's the thing, here's the thing. okay here's the thing i'm gonna be totally real with y'all like we said at the very beginning there are people that are going to abuse this we can set the tone for what it becomes though that's why this is a revolution right and and one of the most common questions that i am asked is how can a one person business actually even provide customer service? I don't have an HR department. I don't have, you know, a, a secretary. I don't have all of these things. Da, 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 da. Customer service bot? Someone actually, you, you actually on the end of it, but in a way that some of that legwork is done for you, direct sales bot in a way that people want to hear from you and it doesn't feel spammy or helps you manage your team like Jen's doing. Jenny's, I mean, I'm obviously a Jenny customer and a Jenny fan, but she's just sending me a little note like, hey, I'm here for you. Provocative question to get me off my butt. You better believe that's effective, right? So no matter what you're doing, I think all of you could find a use for this. And like RJ said, you can do it for free. You can start today. But I know y'all. And just because we can do it for free, sometimes what we really want is to do it right the first time. And that is why in this community, I'm always going to put the best of the best experts who I trust in front of you. Because sure, you could do it for free. But wouldn't it be better to do it right? Wouldn't it be better to feel supported? So, and, and all of you are going to witness what this looks like in action. I'm not saying this so that you wait, but I'm saying if you're on the fence, we are building something for Hustle Sisters right freaking now. You will see the efficacy, efficacy of this very, very quickly, right? Because you're because you're gonna live it, because I'm building it for y'all so that I can be less spammy, more present, so that I can deliver more value for you. It's not about me, it's not about just another platform for me. I'm loud, y'all know how to hear me. I'm everywhere in loud land. But it's about another way for us to connect. So I love that she built something as special for us. And and can we talk about Bob Ross now? We can talk about Bob Ross now. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, after you and I had a great conversation, Annie, a couple of weeks ago when we were scheduling the show and, and talking about folks and, and talking about fear of technology. Um, and I also, uh, I, I have an, I have a live stream that goes on and I was on my live stream a week ago. And I said that I said that thing where I said, you can do this. If you can edit a PowerPoint, you can do this. Mm -hmm. And I got a call about 20 minutes later from one of my clients who had finally decided to start some bots. And he's like, RJ, I went through the intro sequence and I am, um, I am incredibly confused. I need your help. 
And I was like, okay, let's look at it. And so we looked at it and I'm like, oh, indeed, that se that intro sequence that ManyChat uses, not good, a little confusing. I have always signed people up and said, hey, hit that button that says skip the onboarding. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't know what you don't know. Like the first time you try to build a website, even if it's on like Wix or Squarespace, you're like, I don't know what a button's supposed to do. What the hell? So long story short, I came up with the idea of a series, uh, a little video series that's going to be on YouTube. Uh, hint, the link is inside Hustle Yo Bot. Um, so hook up with that bad boy. Um, I did. I shot the pilot episode a week ago. It is called The Joy of Bot Building. I am going to take you through every step. I am going to tell you to pause. We'll create happy little bots together. Can we put happy little trees in my happy little bot? Um, as many as you can fit <laughs> in a bot. And that is absolutely the truth. I love Bob Ross. You know what? That guy was never, ever douchey. He was never, ever salesy. He gave away for free to people. He he didn't require that anybody buy, buy anything from him ever. Ever. He just offered. Your passion on a platform based on relationship building, even if he's not there. That's right. right. He was brilliant at that. Mr. Rogers is brilliant at that. Ellen DeGeneres is brilliant at that, right? These people that just put out there and say, this is what I love. This is why I love it. And I invite you to come experience it for yourself. Yes. And he told everybody that they could do it over and over. He had people come up to him. Encouragement. It was insane. Encouragement is marketing. I know. Isn't it insane? Honestly, I mean, listen, my brain is not blown much when it comes to marketing anymore. But the idea of using marketing as an encouragement tool. It's so beautiful. I mean, because there's no room to do that in an email. You know, there's room for storytelling in emails. There's room for lots of stuff in emails. I don't mean to down email so much. No, but... email is a really great part of a funnel. But what it isn't is immediately actionable or personal. Or personal. Everybody knows they got that blast, baby. It's amazing for brand recognition. It's amazing to generate uh, interest in something new. It's amazing to stay top of mind. All of these things are true. But it's not a conversation. It's a broadcast. This and I don't know from that broadcast what you want, who you are, if you're even right to do business with me at this time. I don't know. I'm just spraying and praying. And you know me, I don't pray very much. So, uh, <laughs> it's extremely expensive too, right? Like, that's why I always get down to, you know, someone says to me, Annie, I need 97,000 social things and, and 90 uh, social accounts and, and 42 plugins for this and that and the other thing. And I'm like, nah, we got to figure out what your people want to hear from you and where they want to hear it. <gasps> yeah. So here we go, Jenny, here's another testimonial or at least for bots from Jenny. It says, I'm currently having conversations with nine people who responded to my bot questions 30 minutes ago. Nine people. Mm -hmm. So RJ, what's your favorite thing about bots? My favorite thing. Now I could mention all the stats here, lean in people. I could mention all the stats. I could tell you, you know, it's really, it's frictionless entry into your world. I could tell you the, you know, I could tell you stories about my clients who are the best people in the whole world. Let me just say that. Some of you are here and you know that. But my very favorite thing about marketing is this. Fake marketing is done. Fake marketing is done. The days of taking my personality and subverting it so that I could sound just like this other person because that person is successful and I'm not and I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to judge what they have and I'm going to put it out there as me and I'm going to see if people respond. The days of that are over. You can hustle sister, be yourself and market at the same time. Sure, people will unsubscribe 
Fantastic, darling. You don't have to worry about them anymore. Let's get more people in. Let's get more and more people exposed to the real you, why you do what you do, why you are the person that they should talk to. And if, you know, some people are going to want to stay and listen and be a part of your tribe forever. Some people are going to be turned off by that. But seriously, this, this conversation, this conversation that we're having right now, I've learned some stuff about you. You've learned some stuff about me. We're a little bit closer because of it. We're going to do some collaboration. It's going to be great. This is the kind of people that, this is the kind of thing that people have been doing for years and years and years. This is the stuff that really works. You can't hide in a conversation. You can hide through all those other things, but you can't hide in a conversation. And that goes both ways. I mean, if, if I've worked with you or if you've watched my rant, if I've worked with you on your community building or your funnel or your networking, I probably told you the thing that I consider to be the truth of marketing and customer service, which is the number one thing that people want to feel is seen. Yes. The number one. First, they want to be seen. Right. Then they want to be accepted for what they put out there by being seen. And then after they feel accepted, then they want to be valued. Right. And it's all that cycle of trust. But the number one thing that people want to feel is seen. And so many people go through their whole lives without anybody asking them, how are you? Without anybody caring. Yeah. You know, my, and this is, it seems kind of tangential, but it's not. My aunt left her husband of a marriage of a billion years because she woke up one day and she realized that day after day, he never said, how are you? How was your trip? How was your day? How was work today? The fact that I absolutely agree, fake marketing is dead, but this is another way that we can provide value, provide connection, and make people feel seen. Yeah, baby. And appreciated and heard. And so if you're as excited as I am to do that with your marketing, and I hope we have pled this case for you, there's so many things. This is just the tip of the iceberg. But if you're ready to join the marketing, the messenger marketing revolution, I absolutely implore you to go to hustleyobot.com and get this real strategist in your corner. I personally vouch that you will not find someone more honest, more genuine, and more able to work within your fears and your budgets that you don't find this often. You don't. You don't. You're always going to have somebody try to con you into more money or or less time with them or whatever. That is the exact opposite of what RJ is offering here, right? Y'all know we don't sell in this group. I don't, this is not, that's not what this is here for. But if you're sitting there and you're struggling with technology or connecting with your audience, or you're on a shoestring budget and you want to make a big impact. Or like me, the idea of marketing as encouragement makes you want to cry. That's the website. That's RJ Redden. I'm Manny P. Ruggles, and this is Hustle Sisters. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Hustle Sisters Prevent Presents. RJ, thank you for sharing your beauty, your passion, your love with us. Thank you for being our Chad. <sighs> I like you so much. I'm going to have to dance again. I'm dancing us out, Annie. Do it. Do it. <laughs> oh, I love it. RJ, I love you. And everybody out there in Hustle Sisters land, thank you for uh, all you do. Thank you for saying that you want to see more things like this. If there's an expert or an area that you'd love to see, next up we have the magnificent often mentioned Monique Johnson coming at you in a couple of weeks to talk about what is this thing called Facebook Live and how the heck am I actually supposed to make money with this thing? All of us are trying to do lives. Some of us are having very success. Monique is a flippin' genius and she's coming at you next. So if there's ever anything you want to see built, you let us know. In the meantime, sisters, we love you. We value you. We see you go out and make beautiful work. Bye.